Shriko. Now, I know what you're probably th thinking looking at that. Oh my god, Chugga, what's wrong with you? Bulbasaur's number one, not Shriko. Well, I'm about to rock your world, because this game introduced a new numbering system that's game-specific. Yeah! I just rocked your socks. Anyway. Trico is a grass-type Pokemon. Typically, grass-types are slow and are more about hindering your opponents with various status inflictions. Not so with this one, though. Even though Trico does have those status-inflicting moves, it's also really quick, and in time actually becomes the fastest grass-type Pokemon in the entire game. So really unique, really useful, not like any other grass type you'll find. So Trico is definitely a good pick if you wanted to have a grass type though, but you don't like the fact that grass types are really slow. Trico, if you chose that, it will now evolve into Grovile, which it gets a lot faster, but it does not get a secondary type like the other Pokemon do that you could choose. Don't get me wrong, it's still a fantastic Pokemon, it just doesn't get that same boost that the others do. Sceptile is the fastest grass type in the game, and is a really good special attacker. Um, it's really, really good in Emerald, but unfortunately it sees a nerf in Diamond and Pearl because of the physical special split of the grass type moves that it typically learns. So, kind of unfortunate. It's good in this game though, but it gets nerfed a little bit in the next one. Torchic is a fire type Pokemon. Fire type Pokemon are typically fast and are generally damage dealers. Uh, height and weight are pretty irrelevant. Don't really pay that much mind. It becomes relevant later on though, but it's not really pressing that you know those numbers. It's kind of just there to let you know how the Pokemon is physically. Evolution is up next, something that is widely known about the Pokemon series. The Pokemon eventually will turn into other Pokemon when they reach a certain level of power. We're going to be going over this a bit later because I don't want to spoil what the starter Pokemon evolve into. I'll be talking about what you're getting with each starter Pokemon, but I don't want to spoil what the starters evolve into quite yet. The third section here is Ability. Ability is a new feature in this game, which is a passive skill that aids your Pokemon in battle. Blaze, as you can see, is Torchic's ability, which makes its fire attacks do more damage when its HP is below one-third. Next up is Stats. These are very important because it determines how your Pokémon is going to perform in battle. They're as follows. HP is how much damage your Pokémon can take before it falls in battle. Attack is how much damage your physical attacks will do. Defense is your resistance to your opponent's physical attacks. Special Attack is what your non-physical attacks do. In Torchic's case, that'd be things like Breathing Fire. Then special defense is, of course, your resistance to your opponent's special attacks. And then lastly is speed, which determines who goes first in a battle, because this is a turn-based battle system like most classic RPGs. Torchic stats, as you can see, it's kind of a jack-of-all-trades. It doesn't really have anything that's particularly low, and its attack and special attack are both pretty good, so pretty much any move that you teach this Pokémon is going to do a lot of damage. So that does it for stats. As for the other info, catch rate is irrelevant right now because Torchic is not a Pokemon that is caught. We are obtaining it here. The gender, self-explanatory, just tells you how often it's a boy and how often it's a girl. And then lastly is version, which explains what version you need to be playing to get Pokemon. Some Pokemon are only in specific versions of the game. However, Torchic is in all three, so nothing to worry about there. Combuskin, not much changes. Main thing is that Combuskin is now a fire and fighting type which is a trend that will be carrying on through many games to come. But anyway, as a fire and fighting type, it now gets same type attack bonus from two types, obviously, but it also gets a few more weaknesses, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. Its stats will increase, obviously, as any evolution will. Blaziken, which is a really good mixed attacker, as I've always said. It's both fighting and fire, and has pretty good offensive stats all the way around, so pretty much any attack you give this Pokemon will do a lot of damage. Of course, though, it does have a lot of weaknesses, the most of any Hoenn starter, so that's kind of unfortunate. Mudkip is a water type. Water types are generally really bulky. Mudkip's ability is the same as Torchic, just water moves, typical starter Pokemon fair now. So Mudkip's stats, it's really slow out of all these Pokemon that you can choose to start with. It's really offense-based, but it also lives up to the bulk that water Pokemon are typically known for. Mudkip, if you chose it, will evolve into Marshtomp, which will become a water ground type. This is a very good type, meaning that it only has one weakness, grass. It is completely immune to, ele to electric, which is a really big weakness of water Pokemon, typically. Swampert. This thing is a beast, only having one weakness, which is grass. Also being good at mixed attacking. Not quite as good as Blaziken, though, but it learns really great moves like Earthquake and Surf, which in conjunction and you know, can work really well in just about any situation. Poochyena is the first dark type that we've encountered. Typically, dark types are about laying traps and hindering your opponent with them and whatnot. is not really like that. It's a very straightforward early Pokemon, and wow, critical hits. 
Um, it doesn't have very good ability. Its ability is Runaway, which makes it run away from wild battle successfully constantly. When it evolves into Mighty Enna, though, it becomes a lot more like a typical Dark type, and it gets the ability Intimidate, which lowers your opponent's attack stat, which is really, really nice. I like that a lot. It's not too good of a Pokemon. Dark types are also the weakest type of Pokemon in terms of attack damage, because the Dark type moves just aren't that good. But... If you have a Torchic, Mighty Enna does cover a weakness that Torchic gets later in the game, so it might be good for you then, though, but I won't really be picking one up. Zigzagoon is the Rattata of this generation. However, I don't like it as much as Rattata, because at least Rattata had Super Fang and good moves like that. Zigzagoon doesn't have any of that. I recommend that you catch one, not because it's a good Pokemon that I want you to use in your team, but it can be good for other things later on. I'll get into that what that is later. It's evolved form Linoon isn't really much different. It's pretty much just the same thing, only a little bit stronger. Wormpool, for veterans of the series, it's basically the Caterpie of this generation. It evolves at a low level like most bug Pokemon do. It evolves into Silcoon, which is basically just a Metapod. It, all it does is harden. And then into Beautifly. I guess if you wanted like a Pokemon that evolves quickly early in the game, it could be a good choice for you. But, personally, I don't like Beautifly that much. It's just kind of like the painfully average Butterfree of this generation and without having the good psychic moves at a low level. Uh, however, Wurmple's a bit unique compared to Caterpie. It can evolve into another Pokemon completely at random, which is... Cascoon. Cascoon, again, is basically just a Metapod, but when it evolves from Cascoon, it'll become Dustox, which I personally like a little bit better. If you want a poison Pokemon this early in the game, which poison Pokemon are great, typically. They're usually about, you know, watering down your opponent and just making their HP dwindle. Area. Really, really good type there, though, but Dustox isn't really the best, though. But if you want one early on, I guess it can work. But there's something I wanted to address because I was called out on two things by you, the viewers. First thing is entirely my fault. I type up Beautiful, his name is Beautiful. I make mistakes, I deserve to be called out on it. Thank you for pointing that out. Second, though, I really need to address. It was when I said that Wurmple evolves at random. I received hundreds upon hundreds of comments trying to educate me that it depends on gender, time of day, or some other not random factor. I am here to disprove this because it is not dependent on gender, but on personality value. Gender is only one of four integers that make up a Pokemon's personality value. This this is a 32-bit value between 0 and 4,294,967,295 represented in binary that was introduced in Generation 3, one generation after gender was implemented for Pokemon other than Nidoran. Breaking down how this works, Wurmple's evolution depends on the last two bytes of this integer, only one of which decides the Pokemon's gender. It is determined by taking the, these numbers combined between the two bytes of memory, dividing them by 10, and seeing if the remainder is more or less than 5. If the remainder is less than 5, you get a Silcoon. If it is equal to or greater than 5, you get a Cascoon. There's many players guys floating around out there that have this detail wrong, so I gotta understand why you would think otherwise, but if you're going to try to correct me, please make sure you have your facts straight before you do. Otherwise, I can and will nerd out on you. But what do I know? I can't even spell beautiful, I write. Lotad is a water and grass type, has very few weaknesses, and like most water types, it is really bulky, and like most grass types, it's good at hindering your opponent with various status inflictions. However, I'm not going to talk much more about Lotad because I intend to catch it. I don't want to spoil the evolved forms of things that I'm going to catch in particular, in addition to the starters before we saw them. Though. I got some people complaining that I didn't go over Lombre in the last episode because our Lotad finally evolved, but really, not a whole lot changes. It's pretty much Lotad, only stronger. But I guess the main thing to go over is that once it evolves into Lombre, it'll finally start learning some water attacks, which is something that Lotad really didn't have. Lotad was more of a grass type than a water type, whereas with Lombre, it's a lot more balanced. Ludicolo is ultimately the grand Mexican racist stereotype that Lombre evolves into. So we have seen what all three of our Pokemon are now going to evolve into that are not fully evolved. Actually, no, not one of them. But anyway, this thing is annoying to fight. It can regain health really easily, especially with Rain Dance, because it just is so, so good at that, because it has Rain Dish. It learns other health draining moves like Leech Seed, and on top of that, only has three weaknesses, and they are not the most common types in the world, weak to only Flying, Bug, and Poison. So, this thing gets really irritating. Plus, on top of that, it quad resists uh, Water, which is a really common type, especially in this game, though, so... Really good Pokemon to have. You gotta have a Water Stone if you want to evolve. Sea Dot is only found in Ruby and Emerald, not in Sapphire. It's a lot more offensive than its defensive counterpart of Lotad. When Sea Dot evolves into Nuzleaf, it gets a Dark subtype, making it Grass and Dark, which is pretty good for type coverage on opponents' typical weaknesses. And then eventually, when evolving into Shift Tree, which it does so with a Leaf Stone, which is an item evolution, which we'll get into a bit later. If you can get a Pokemon that has Sunny Day to make it sunny out, this thing is a monster. 
But if you don't plan on having a Sun Summoner on your team, it's really not worth it all that much. Talo is actually a very good Pokemon that I recommend. It is not just a Pidgey clone, believe it or not. Talos are very aggressive. They have the ability Guts, which is really good, which makes it so when you're afflicted with a status condition, your attack stat goes up by a lot. When Talo evolves into Swellow, it is ridiculously fast. So, really aggressive, really fast. It's more like Doduo and Dodrio, actually. If you like using them in the older games, you should love Talo and Swellow. Wingle. Even the almighty Rayquaza fears this beast. Wingle is a water flying type, but it's not nearly as good as Gyarados. It's really, really frail. It evolves into Pelipper. Uh, it might be good to catch a Wingle for later in the game if you don't plan on catching a flying Pokemon, because it will be good for practical uses, though, but I really don't recommend... FOREST STAR! WHAT?! Ralts is kind of like the Abra of this game. Really annoying to catch, and it's really... because it's so rare, and when you do get it, it's really weak, only knowing Growl. But when it evolves into Curlia, it becomes a pretty decent Psychic-type attacker. Psychic-types were known for being ridiculously overpowered back in the day. So, you can kind of get where that comes from. Psychic types are generally really good special attackers, and they're also pretty good at taking special hits as well. Really good type of Pokemon, when it evolves into Gardevoir, um, it pretty much, well, not only does it become extremely feminist, even if it is a male, but Gardevoir is really, really good at doing just what psychic types are known for. It's fairly quick, it deals a lot of damage, and it can be a, it can work on really any team. Surf gets a bug water type, really unique type, but I will say this thing is extremely rare. You have like, god, a serious 1% chance of finding this thing in the grass so early. And it's so frail, it just isn't worth tracking it down just to find this thing when it's that frail of a Pokemon. When it evolves into Masquerade, it gets the ability Intimidate, which is a good ability which covers for its frail defenses by lowering your opponent's attack. But it's just so rare and so difficult to get that it really just isn't worth it and there's plenty of better Pokemon with that ability. Shroomish is awesome. This Pokemon has a really good ability, Effect Spore. When you attack it, it can potentially inflict you with Paralysis, Poison, Sleep, as amongst other things, which are all status inflictions that grass types are typically known for. I'll get into what all these do exactly, though, but from the name, you can pretty much guess what they do. I mean, Poison, you lose HP, Paralysis, you can't move, stuff like that. So, Shroomish, when it evolves into Berloom, it becomes a part fighting type, has a major weakness to flying, but the cool thing is, it's a really good damage dealer, and it also can sap opponent's health. So, again, pretty decent Pokemon. I've raised one myself in previous playthroughs. Let me uh, wander around a bit though. I want to find a Pokemon and I just can't seem to find it. For the love of Princess Elise's non-existent Panios, I finally found one! Oh my god. Okay. Finally. Okay. This is the Pokemon I was looking for. Slack off. Now just looking at it, you're probably wondering why the heck would I ever want to catch this thing? It looks so lazy and weak. And true, it does have an ability called Truant, unintentional rhyme, that makes it only attack every other turn. If you look at its stats though, it has amazing stats across the board. This thing is like beyond legendary. So, if you can get past the ability, it's a really good Pokemon, and I decided that I want to try to use one as a challenge of sorts, I guess. So that's my reasoning. Vigoroth, the evolution of Slackoth, is much faster. It also now has the ability Vital Spirit, making it so that it can never sleep. Slacking is ultimately what our Vigoroth is going to evolve into. This thing... tears stuff up. It really does. This thing has beyond legendary stats. However, it can only attack every other turn. Abra, which you can only find in this area in Emerald, it's available in the other games later on. Abra is tough to catch. It teleports away from you on the first turn if you try to capture it, and it's not the easiest Pokemon in the world to catch. If you do catch it, though, it's really difficult to level up, but your troubles are rewarded once it evolves into Kadabra at a fairly low level, where it becomes a pretty good special attacker. And then... Unfortunately, to get its evolved form, you need to trade with somebody else to get its final evolution, Alakazam. For this reason, I think you're a bit more best suited to go for Ralts, even though Alakazam is a bit more offense-based. But that's just kind of my personal opinion. They're both fantastic Pokemon. Ninkeda, which is a really unique Pokemon to say the least. 
This Pokemon evolves not into one Pokemon, but into two. It evolves into Ninjask automatically at level 20. Ninjask is an extremely fast Pokemon, has the ability Speed Boost, which raises its speed at the end of every turn, and also learns moves like Swords Dance, which will sharply raise its attack. It's really good for the move Baton Pass, which will pass its stat buffs onto your other Pokemon. So, if you're looking for a really good team support Pokemon, Ninjask is your guy. Only problem is, it is really frail. If you have an extra slot in your six slots for Pokemon, it will also evolve into Shedinja, which is a really unique Pokemon. I like it more than most people do, but I can understand why some don't like it. It only ever has one HP. However, it will only take damage for moves that are super effective on it, and it has a really unique type of Bug and Ghost. So, really unique Pokemon. It can be good if used right, but you really, really have to know how to use it, or it's not going to work. Wizmer, I really do not recommend. It's a normal type Pokemon, meaning that it can learn a lot of good moves, but the thing is, it's just really weak, and it takes so long to evolve. When it evolves into Loudred, it's decent, I guess, though, and then into Explode, I guess it has decent stats, though, but it just... It's so weak for so long, it takes so long to evolve, and there's so many other normal types that can be used for the same purposes that I really think it's just interchangeable and inferior. Trading my CDOT for a Ralt. That is a horrible trade. I would never take a CDOT over a Ralt. I hate to say it, but all the in-game trades in this game suck. The way that these work is that you can trade your Pokemon, it'll be the same level as the one that you traded. And sometimes it's holding a special item though, but it's not really that useful, in this game at least. There are good in-game trades in other games, and actually this in-game trade is a bit different in Ruby and Sapphire, but it's also equally not that good, because you got to trade a slack off of the Pokemon you're getting. And the Pokemon you're getting in the Ruby and Sapphire version of this trade is Makuhita. Makuhita is really different from most fighting types. It's more so of a tank, has a lot of potential to take hits, and has a lot of HP. Now, what's really strange, though, about Makuhita is once it evolves into Hariyama, which it does quite late, so you'd expect this Pokemon to be really tough, oddly, Hariyama's easier to catch, according to the game's catch rate, than Makuhita is. Yeah, the pre-evolution is more difficult. I don't get how that works. Thing is, this in-game trade basically exists for people who pick Torchic, who are not going to have an advantage against the first gem, which, big spoiler, uses rock types, just like in just about every game in the series, aside with only two exceptions. Now this trade, I don't recommend even if you want a Makuhita, because there's much better types to attack rock with, because it's more weak to special than it is to physical. And if you really want a Makuhita, you can just catch one in the next town, it's not that far away, so you're not really doing yourself any favors by taking this trade even if you want it. Goldeen! The original generic fish Pokemon Goldeen learns a lot of physical moves, and wouldn't you know it, it's meant to be a physical attacker. This doesn't work out too well for water types, when it evolves it learns even more moves like that. It just doesn't have the best special attack, and being a physical water type isn't really beneficial until Diamond and Pearl, so... Not the best water type though, but it is unique. Magikarp is regarded as being the weakest Pokemon of all, even though it's only the second or third weakest, I believe, in terms of stats. Magikarp, all it knows at this level is Splash until level 15 when it learns the first move it has that does damage, which is Tackle. Splash is completely useless, as we mentioned earlier. However, when Magikarp evolves, the main draw of it is that it evolves into Gyarados, which is a very strong Pokemon, only weak to Electric and Rock. It's Water Flying type, which is kind of unique. And it's definitely a lot better than Wingle and Pelipper, that's for dang sure. Meryl! It starts off as an Azuril. Azuril is a pre-evolution of it that you can breed uh, Merrills to get. It needs to be holding a C increase to be able to spawn that Pokemon, though. We'll get into what breeding is a bit later, though. Anyway, though. Meryl! is really bulky like most water types are. When it evolves, as you can see there, it didn't take hardly any damage from my attack despite it being a weakness. When it evolves into a Azumarill, it is even more bulky. And what's really cool is it gets the ability Huge Power, which if it has that, its attack stat is doubled. So it can be a good attacking force, a good special attacking force, and a bulky wall all in one Pokemon. If you're looking for a good water type, Meryl could be a good one. It's not the best water type out there, mind you. Not as good as, say, Gyarados. But Gyarados isn't quite as bulky, though. But yeah, really, really good Pokemon there. Whoa, 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 hang on. Did you see the difference between Azuril's bio and Meryl's bio that was kind of weird? Okay, let me point this out to you. Azuril, 
has a gender ratio of 75-25. Meryl, on the other hand, has a gender ratio of 50-50. This is the only Pokemon that does this. One third of all female Azurals become male when they evolve into Meryl. In other words, it grows a dick. Geodude, I should say, is very defensive physically. Unfortunately, it has a lot of weaknesses, which kind of doesn't make it the greatest Pokemon in the world. When it evolves into Graveler, it continues to be a bit more, it continues to be really defensive and doesn't really seem to change. It does learn some more offensive moves as a Graveler, though. To evolve it, you need to trade it with somebody else. That when it gets taken, sent to them, they will get its final evolution, which is Golem. Golem, I used to think was really, really good back in the days of Red and Blue, but unfortunately, rock types seem to keep getting nerfed by an overflow of water Pokemon that were getting introduced into these games. They get really heavily buffed in the fourth game in the series, though, but maybe some other time. Nosepass, I really do not like. Very generic rock Pokemon. It doesn't evolve into anything better, not in this game at least. If you want to catch one for yourself, you can't do it until really, really late in the game. It's just one of those rare Pokemon that isn't really that good. So, I'd say skip out on Nosepass. It is not a very good Pokemon. Skitty, you have a 2% chance of finding, when it, regardless of what version you're playing, and as much as I really hate to just discount a Pokemon entirely, because I know that there's always potential, I just find it difficult to recommend this Pokemon to anybody, even when it evolves into Delcaddy. It's just so tough, because it has no base stat over 70 as a fully evolved Pokemon. It's just really, really tough to recommend, and it's so rare to get that... I don't know, if you really, really like how it looks, maybe? That's about it. Zubat! Any classic Pokemon fan has seen all too many of these in their life, but despite being so common, Zubat really isn't that bad of a Pokemon. Much like Tentacle, you would think something so common would be so good, but it actually is pretty good. One of the better poison types, it is extremely fast. When it evolves into Golbat, which it does so at a decent level, I guess, takes kind of a while to evolve, which kind of sucks, though, but once it evolves into Golbat, Ridiculously fast, really good at getting into free hits. To evolve it into its final evolution of Crobat, which is one of my personal favorite Pokemon, you need to evolve it through happiness, which is something we haven't encountered yet. You have to basically just have it with you. Um, holding an item that we're going to get later called the Soothe Bell will help that. Not letting it faint in battle, things like that will raise happiness, though, so pretty good. Tentacool is, well... It's very defensive. It is actually very good at standing up to special attacks. Plus, it's water, making it bulky, and it's poison, which, of course, like I've always said, is a really good type. Tentacruel, as I'm sure you know by now, is a really good attacker of both the poison type and of the uh, water type. And then, in addition to that, it also serves pretty well in the way of special defending. And it gets even better as you get further into the game here, as you get into further games, because in black and white it gets buffed even further with moves like Toxic Spikes. In Ruby and Sapphire, there are two Pokemon here, named Mawile and Sableye. Point blank, they suck. I really don't like them. They... Sableye has no weakness, but its stats are just so incredibly weak that it's just not even worth it. This thing actually does have one use. If you're having difficulty with the Doofer Gym, this Pokemon is immune to all moves carried by the gym leader. I wouldn't recommend using it after that fight, but if that fight is giving you trouble, you might want to use Sableye for that one battle if you don't care about your other Pokemon getting the experience. So, not really useful except for that one fight, but it definitely is a good tip. Mawile, again, it is so incredibly weak, it's not even funny, it never evolves. What's actually kind of funny though about Mawile, even though I can't run into one to show you, in Pokemon Ruby, there was actually a typo in its Pokedex entry, meaning that its name was probably going to be spelled different. It was spelled with an H instead of W-I-L-E. It was spelled W-H-I-L-E, which is kind of funny. Aron is a Steel type. First Steel type we've actually run into. These things are tough, and they're immune to poison, too. They're really, really irritating if you're just trying to get through here in a hurry. They're weak to fire, though, so that's good. Uh, when it evolves into Lairon, which it does so at a pretty late level, it becomes really, really tough, actually. It is actually kind of annoying to kill. They're very, very defensive, as you might guess, and actually, no, they're not weak to fire. They take normal damage, forgot the part rock. And then into Aggron, just shortly after, again, they're actually pretty tough. The only downside is they have a high number of weaknesses being both steel and rock, so I don't think they're the greatest steel type in the world types you can get. There's definitely better, though, but they're not bad. Machop is a Pokemon we have not yet encountered. 
typically Machop, as you would guess, is a very bulky physical attacker. It's not very fast. As it evolves, it pretty much doesn't change that much. It's just all power and not much else. To evolve it into its final evolution Machamp, you'll need to trade with someone else. Not really much more complicated than that. Now for a second Pokemon. Believe it or not, despite how weak it is, and the fact this Pokemon is Psychic type, I am going to attack it using a Cool Tent. Yeah. Ametatite is a Pokemon we also haven't encountered yet. It is a Fighting and Psychic type. Meaning that it has a lot of potential for diversity because it's a good special type and a good physical type. Metatite evolves into Metacham very late at level 37, which is definitely a disadvantage. It has a lot of potential as a physical attacker with its ability helping its normally low stats, but I don't really see how it could be that good of a special attacker, but I'm pretty certain there is some way that you could make it work if you really wanted to. Electrike which is something that's really annoying to fight in the wild, though, to do its static ability, meaning that you can't attack it directly or else you risk getting paralyzed. It evolves into Magnectric, uh, pretty... Well, I guess level 26 is alright. When it evolves into Magnectric, it is pretty much a special attacker. It's fast and it is good for special attacking, like most electric types are. It's alright, I guess. It's not really the best electric type, though, but you can definitely make it work. If you're going to use it, though, I definitely recommend having the ability Static over Lightning Rod, though. Plusle and Minin. They are Pokemon that are meant to work very well together in double battles. Plusle is pretty much... Well, Plusle's ability is plus, which makes it so that when it's in battle with a Pokemon with minus, it does better. They also learn moves like Helping Hand and whatnot for helping out their ally in a double battle, and... Why did they both use Helping Hand? That's supposed to make your allies attack stronger, so they wanted to use a Helping Hand to make the other Helping Hand stronger. Okay, whatever. Anyway, though, Minin is different. Its ability is Minus, which works well together with Pokemon with Plus. So as you can see, using them together in a double battle is generally the way to go. Unfortunately, not nearly every battle in this game is a double battle. Now, having both Pokemon on your team, which are pretty much the same Pokemon, more or less, is not that good of an idea, especially because not nearly every battle in this game is a double battle, but using them by themselves, they're actually not that bad. They're not like that award-winning electric type, though, but they really aren't too bad. I mean, they got good speed and, good sp and decent special attack. It's not like they're terrible, but you get what I mean. There just aren't many situations to use them in double battles, though, so if you're going to want to pick one of these up, you probably want to just use one by itself. Magnemite and its evolved form Magneton are very defensive Pokemon that are also good at dealing on special attacks. They get a better evolution in the next game, but sadly here that doesn't exist. These things are really big powerhouses that can also take hits, though. Voltorb, very fast Pokemon. They are notorious for using exploding moves where they sacrifice themselves to do a lot of damage. Wish I could use Yawn, but unfortunately it has the ability of uh, Soundproof, which would prevent that. Volbeat and Illumise, another duo of Pokemon, similar to Plusl and Minin. These I don't recommend as much. Whoa, gotta revive! These ones aren't really like Plusl and Minin. They're not quite as salvageable in single battles as Plusl and Minin are. These things are really, really meant to work together in double battles. And their stats really just aren't quite as good as Plusl and Minin's were. I mean, I guess they still have the speed going for them, though, but not really much else. I think Volbeat's more offensive, whereas Illumise is more defensive. And as for the pronunciation of Illumise's name, that's how the anime pronounced it. That's why I'm saying it like that, because everyone's like, why aren't you saying it like Illumise? But, yeah, that's why I'm saying it Illumise. Oddish, or Ordish, as many people like to call it nowadays. Oddish is an old classic, a grass poison type. Pretty much the original overused grass poison type by trainers in Red and Blue. Evolving into Gloom, probably one of the weirdest looking Pokemon. It has two choices. You can either evolve it into Vileplume. Vileplume, as you can see, mainly specialized in special attack and special defense. How special? It's not very fast, though, so much like Shiftry, it's okay normally. But if you have a Sun Summoner on your team, it is... This thing, if used right, can be brutal. And of course, double same-time attack bonus is also helpful when trying to be a sweeper like that. Vileplume is not going to be the thing that outspeeds everything, but it's definitely a lot more usable in Sunshine. The other choice is Belossum, which it loses its poison type, and its stats are distributed a bit more in favor of defense than offense. Much like Vileplume, of course, you can always activate Chlorophyll if you want to make this thing a bit more useful. Personally, I like Vileplume a bit better, but it really just comes down to, do you want two types and offense, or do you want a monotype and defense? Doduo, 
is a really fast flying type evolving into Dodrio at fairly late level. If you can somehow get it to that level without much trouble, it is ridiculously fast. It is really, really good at just being a normal flying type. Plus it can learn fly, even though it's a flightless bird, which is kind of weird, but hey. If you really want a good normal flying type, it gets the job done. Dreselia, which is a grass poison type, it's pretty generic in this game. Gets an evolution that's awesome in the next game, but unfortunately it does not evolve into anything as of yet, and it's still an okay Pokemon, just nowhere near as good as it is in the later games. Gulpin, a poison type. Gulpin is really weird. I guess you could kind of compare it to Tentacool a little bit, just without the water type though, but it's not quite as good at standing up to hits as Tentacool is. It's a lot more balanced, though. It evolves into Swalot, which is one of my personal favorite weird-looking Pokémon. And I guess it does evolve a bit sooner than Tentacool as well, so maybe if you don't want to use Tentacool necessarily, or have to worry about its early lack of moves, because this thing does learn some decent moves a lot earlier, I guess it can be for you. Carvanas we're going to be running into quite a bit. They have the ability Rough Skin, which makes them... I wouldn't say irritating to fight, but it does make it so that you're kind of limited from making physical contact with them because you'll take damage. It's a water and dark type, which is kind of unique. It evolves into Sharpedo at a decent enough level, and yes, that is really its name. But, um, I guess it's a decent Pokemon. It's not the greatest water type in the world, but its ability makes it kind of unique, and uh-oh, uh, that's really, really not good. There is something unique about Route 129 that I really, really want to tell you guys about. There's no items here, but there is a Pokemon here we can't find on any other route, and that is Wailord. There is a 1% chance of finding this thing, and if you don't want to grow a Whalemur to level 40, it is the only place you can find a Wailord. Be absolutely sure it's Route 129, not Route 128 or any other route on this water. It's only on Route 129. Because... Unless you want to train a Whelmer up to level 40, which more power to you if you do, I'm more impatient than that, and I don't like using my experience on Pokemon that I'm not going to use. So, if you haven't guessed by now, I'm probably going to just off-screen this area for a while and look for a Whalord, because there is a side quest coming up. It may be a side quest, but it is one that you really, really want to participate in. Trust me on that. Where you need a Whalord to be able to do it. It sounds really stupid, but you do. Nummel, which is a fire and ground type, really unique there. But, okay, I'm fighting, I guess. Nummel is really slow, but it's got really good type coverage. Fire and ground are both really good offensive types. It evolves into Camerupt, which isn't the most usable Pokemon in the world. In a later game, it gets an ability that is awesome, but unfortunately it doesn't have it here though, so it's not quite as awesome as it could be. But still, it's slow, and it does have a lot of weaknesses, but if it does get in an attack, it's gonna hurt a lot because of just what kind of good moves it has access to. Slugma, though, it's a fire-type Pokemon, and in all honesty, when before this game was coming out, I kept thinking that it evolved into Torkoal eventually, but it does not. They're unrelated. Uh, Slugma evolves fairly late at, into Macargo, which... Would you stop doing that?! Macargo is, again, very slow. It's a rock and fire type, which is kind of a weird combination with a lot of weaknesses. However, I guess I kind of like the concept of it. Rock and fire together are pretty good types offensively, though, but it just kind of sucks that it has low speed, so... I guess know what you're getting yourself into with that. Torkoal is very defensive, as you would guess. However, it's kind of got a lot of weaknesses, and it's not really the greatest thing in the world because of that, though, so I am going to hope to God that I can pull off a victory here by switching into my Lombre and hitting it with some water moves. It Now, something about Torkoal is... Played the other... Whoa. That didn't do anything. Okay. Uh... I don't have any water moves yet. Crap. Grimer is a very special defensive Pokemon. It's one of what I consider one of the better poison types out there. Now, it's really good at standing up to special attacks, and it's good at physical damage, but it's not really good at much else. As you can see here, we can't use strength outside of battle quite yet, though, but anyway. Grimer evolves into Muck, which is it's a special tank. Unfortunately, it's weak to the Psychic type, though, so that kind of nerfs that a bit. And then better than Muck, in my opinion, is Coughing. I used Coughing in a previous playthrough, as you might recall. And that was one fun ride indeed. Anyway though, Coughing, I like a lot more because it has the ability Levitate, making it immune to ground type attacks, meaning its only weakness is Psychic, which is really cool. 
evolves into Weezing. Weezing is possibly one of the best physical walls in this particular game. It was alright in the first two games, and it just got better in this one. It also got a lot of better moves like Will-O-Wisp, which burns the opponent, which allows you to lower their attack by half. But yeah, all in all, I like Weezing a lot. You know my opinion on it if I used it. Spoink! I've made fun of this thing's name in the past, though, but how does it hold up as a Pokemon? It's one of the earlier Psychic types you can obtain. It is found after uh, Abra and Ralts, though. It's more of a defensive Psychic type, as weird as that sounds. It specializes in special defense. It's not really as much of an attacker as other Psychic types. I guess if you want something bulky, it can get the job done. It evolves into Grumpig fairly late at level 32. And I have to say, I kind of like this thing. I don't know why. It's just a Pokemon that just isn't really known very much by many people. And I don't know why. I just have always liked it. I can't really explain why, but I kind of like it. Don't know why. Sandshrew, which is a ground type. Sandshrew isn't all that speedy, though, but hey, not many ground types besides Dugtrio are. It evolves decently laid into Sand Slash. Uh, basically, it's an old classic. If you liked using it before, you're going to like using it now. Nothing's really changed about it oh, across the generations. It's just a ground type attacker that's really balanced. Spinda is a joke. <laughs> it is hands down one of the weakest Pokemon ever. 60 across the board in all of its stats. Really diverse move pool. So I guess it does have a lot of moves that it can learn, but similar to Dunsparce, even though it can learn so many good moves, it doesn't have much of a way to use them. But I guess if you really wanted one, at least it can learn just about anything you would ever want. Now, the spots on Spinda's face are kind of unique because it can have many different combinations. Guess how many combinations? 4,294,967,296. Yeah, that's how many. Skarmory is a defensive wall, and a damn good one at that. Doesn't evolve, but it doesn't really need to. I'm not going to use one, though, because it is a bit overdone. Whoa, a double team TM. Okay. Uh, Skarmory only has a handful of weaknesses, and its physical defense is beastly as its number of defenses, as Steel is the most defensive type in the game. So yeah, Skarmory is a re really overused Pokemon for a reason. It's really good at what it does. It's also good at withering down your opponent. If you want to wither him down with moves like Toxic or Spikes, it's definitely a good Pokemon for using those moves. This Pokemon is Trap Inch. Trap Inch starts off as a really weird, derpy-looking ground type that is really not that usable. It's really weak to start off. However, it evolves really late and it's tough to raise, but when it evolves into Vibrava, or Vibrava, I don't know which it actually is, it becomes a part dragon type. You might see where this is going now. A ground dragon type with Levitate. So, decent typing, it has some good coverage and everything and whatnot for offensive per capabilities and whatnot, so it becomes a bit more usable. However, at level 45, it evolves into Flygon, which is a fan favorite Pokemon of this generation. Flygon is very fast, very physically oriented offensively, and it's got decent stats across the board otherwise. A lot of people like this thing. And I definitely know why. It's very usable. Downside is, it's really, really tough to raise up, but if you're willing to do it, you, your efforts will be rewarded. Cacnea here, which is a grass type. It starts off a bit generic, I guess. It's the typical slow grass type that I guess is good at special attacking. It also does have a bit of a niche in the physical attacking, though, because it can really use either. It's a mixed attacker. It evolves into the very uniquely typed Cacturn, which Cacturn... Uh, grass and Dark type. It's mainly a mixed attacker. It's quite usable, I guess, if you wanted to have something that can use either or, really. I'm not really going to be using one myself, though, because I already have a Grass type, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it for Cacnea. I want to run into the Pokémon that I am trying to find here, but unfortunately, I'm not having much luck. 40% encounter rate, my ass. This took forever to find. Luckily, it's the highest possible level we can have it at. This is Swablu, the wild Pokemon in this route that I was wanting to find and capture myself. This thing is a pretty generic, normal flying type. And you might be wondering why I would want this thing. It has a nice ability, Natural Cure, which makes it though so whenever you switch it out, it automatically will heal any problems it has status-wise. But the thing is, even though I'm not going to spoil what this thing evolves into, I really like the Pokemon that it evolves into, and I think it's really underrated. 
Altaria is ultimately what Swablu will evolve into. It is good on both defensive fronts, and it works as a mixed attacker as well. So, it's a also a jack-of-all-trades, though, but it's... I guess more of a special attacker, though, because Dragon is special in this game. Zangoose, the mongoose that is the rival of Seviper, is only found in Ruby. Zangoose, I actually like a lot more than most people. Wow, that was a really bad voice crack. I was like, Zangoose! I like it a lot more than most people. It has the ability immunity, meaning that it can't be poisoned, giving it an edge against poison types like Seviper. Fitting. And it's a pretty good... It's a pretty good attacker. I like it quite a bit. It's a good damage dealer. So, Seviper and Zangoose are pretty decent. Seviper is only found in Sapphire and Emerald. Well, it's a poison type. It's kind of like the Arbok of this game. Hey, trainers, which one of these Pokemon evolves into Seviper, as you guys might remember if you ever watched the anime? Seviper has the move Poison Fang. It's the only move in the game that, besides Toxic, that can do badly poison and also do damage at the same time. So, really, really cool feature that that Pokemon has. Aside from that, it's pretty much a balanced poison type, not much of anything else to it. Lunatone, which is only found in Sapphire, which is the special version of the two. Both of them are kind of oddly distributed in the way of stats, not what you'd expect. Personally, I'd recommend Lunatone a bit more, though, but hey, that's pretty much all there is to them. Solrock and Lunatone, a duo of Pokemon, also, I guess, meant for double battles. Unfortunately, I don't have my repel, so maybe I'll run into one. These Pokemon are indeed very unique. Uh, the Ruby and Emerald version of this duo, Solrock, is more of a physical attacker, which is really odd, because it's a rock and psychic type, meaning that you'd expect it to be a mixed attacker. Not so, its special attack is really lacking, and they're actually kind of one or the other, so Solrock is the physical one of the two. Barboach. I never went over this Pokemon throughout the main story, even though I actually recorded commentary for it. It was in a section of a video that got removed and I never amended it back in later. This is a water ground type, really good typing, only one weakness, grass, a type unique only to it, Mudkip's family, and to the Wooper family as well, which are not available in the main story of this. But this thing could be good for your team if you felt like you were missing out on something because that is an amazing type. It's not quite as aggressive as Mudkip's line, but still pretty decent. It evolves into Whisk Cash at a decent enough level for what it is caught with, considering it has to be caught with a good rod or super rod. But yeah, Corefish is pretty much your standard water type. It's kind of defensive. It evolves kind of late, unfortunately, into Crawdont, who is a water dark type that's in an even worse position than Absol. It has two types that are good for special attacking, but unfortunately... Or it has two types that are good for special attacking, but unfortunately, it has really strong physical attack. It just doesn't have moves to back up what it's supposed to do. It, it, it doesn't have moves to back up what it's supposed to do because physical dark and physical water moves did not yet exist and don't until Diamond and Pearl. So, again, unfortunate case of something that could have been. Plus, on top of that, its speed is just abysmal, where at least Absol had salvageable speed. So, really, really sucks to be crawled on. Valtoy is a ground and psychic type. It is more common in Emerald than it is in Ruby and Sapphire, where it was decently rare. Valtoy, it's all right, I suppose. It is basically just a wall in all respects. It is both a physical wall and a special wall, as we're fighting one right now, of course. Ground and Psychic does give it quite a bit of coverage offensively, though, but its stats don't really reflect anything offensive. It evolves into Claydol, which is quite possibly the most uncreative name for a Pokemon ever, unfortunately. Claydol, again, is a double wall, and then it also can be a mixed attacker. It's really a jack-of-all-trades with some more de with some defensive capabilities. It doesn't have a lot of HP to back up those defenses, and I guess even though it does have a lot of offensive capabilities, it also has quite a few weaknesses with those two types, though, so... It's not the thing that I'd recommend the most, but it's not bad either. Right here we have the root fossil. If fossils take in the ground around it, will likely crumble away. Take the root fossil anyway. Over here, we have the claw fossil. Now, these can turn into one of two Pokemon. The root fossil becomes the leap. The leap is a grass rock type, very unusual type that no one ever remembers. It's very slow. However, very defensive. It evolves at level 40 into Cradley, and again, just like Flygon, if you want to evolve it, I have to say, Cradley is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated Pokemon of all time. This thing is really annoying to defeat. 
It is defensive as hell, it can restore HP like nobody's business, and it has a weird type that no one ever remembers. The Claw Fossil becomes Anorith, which is a bug rock type. Anorith is more offensive than defensive. I don't think it's quite as good of a choice as Cradley, but the thing is, I've tried using a Cradley in single player before, and I didn't find many scenarios in which it'd be more which would be useful. I guess Cradley is more the multiplayer Pokemon, whereas Anorith could kind of be the more uh, single player Pokemon. Anorith evolves into Armal Armal Armaldo, also at level 40. It just gets more offensive in this state, and it also has a nice ability, though, but that's pretty much it. I don't plan on using either of these on my team. I was actually originally planning to use Cradley on my team, but when I practiced this game, I really couldn't find much use for it, though. But you know what? In honor of that lost party member, I will take the Root Fossil. And once we take that, just moving a frickin' fossil results in this happening. That whole building collapsed! And the other fossil just goes away. You will get the ability to get the other fossil later in the game, but only if you are playing Emerald. Otherwise, you will not. Jigglypuff can be bred at the, at the daycare to make the Pokemon Igglybuff its pre-evolution. Evolves through happiness into Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff! Which is one of your original normal types, a classic indeed. Jigglypuff evolves with the use of a Moonstone, which you should have by this point in the game for Meteor Falls. Wigglytuff, I personally like. It's best way I can describe it is Chansey on a diet, I guess. It's got really diverse moves, and it's got a lot of HP. I like it decently. It's a decent normal type. Personally, I'm more with the crowd that Clefable is the better Pokemon, though. Feebas is only found on six tiles on this entire route through fishing. You need to check each and every space before being sure that you can get this thing. It is ridiculous. I've had times where I found one in 20 minutes, times where it's taken me as much as nine hours to find one. So, not easy. It evolves very uniquely. It evolves into Milotic through raising its beauty stat through blending berries, which again, we can't do yet. That seems to be the thing of this LP now, besides for getting Slavenator's items, is that I cannot do that. But it is the rarest Pokemon ever, Milotic, you might not think it's worth it, but Milotic is actually very good defensively and in terms of doing special attacks. So, it's actually a very good Pokemon. Cast form! This is a very strange Pokemon. It has different forms depending on the weather. When you get it, it is always holding the Mystic Water. So, we want to take that item, obviously, and use it on one of our existing Pokemon, because that raises the power of water type moves. It's got the moves Powder Snow, Sunny Day, Rain Dance, and Hail when you get it. Uh, this Pokemon has a fire form for sunny day, a water form for rain dance, and an ice form for hail. So, it changes depending on the weather. It's kind of a cool Pokemon, but its stats are abysmal. If you, uh, if you want a Pokemon that is really, really good at uh, using weather and whatnot, uh, this thing, I guess, can be alright. Kecleon. Very unique Pokemon. It has the ability Color Change, which makes it so that every time that it's hit with a move, its move change, its type changes from normal to whatever type it was just hit with. The problem with this is, many Pokemon carry moves that, well, are weaknesses of moves that are in their, uh, weaknesses of types that they also have in their move set. So, this thing can be very exploited in that regard. It's also very slow. It's a cool looking Pokemon, don't get me wrong. I like it a, I like it a lot in terms of looks, and I have used one before though, and I it was pretty valuable to my team. Because like any normal type, it can learn a lot of stuff though, but its ability is just such a hindrance. And I Pokemon. Uh, I guess now would be the time to go over the two new Pokemon you can find in this route. First of all is Shuppet, who is found only in Sapphire and Emerald, not in Ruby. Shuppet is quite unusual. It evolves in Bayonet fair to Bayonet fairly late in Bayonet into Bayonet fairly late. Bayonet is meant to be a mixed attacker, but it's slow and doesn't have the greatest defenses though, so it's kind of a high risk Pokemon. It's more of a glass cannon, I guess you'd say. Not the best glass cannon in the world either though, so it's a bit tough for me to recommend though. And here we're getting into a battle. And then the other, which is clearly the better of the two, on this route you can only find it in Ruby though, but later you can also find it in Emerald, and that is Duskull. This Pokemon is really defensive. It takes a while to evolve, but when it does, into Dusclops. 
It is a very good Pokemon. It is one of the best defensive Pokemon in the game, and it can defend on both fronts of physical and special. I was actually going to be using this on my team originally, but then decided against it though because I kind of figured it was a bit overdone. I knew that it was definitely a good choice. It's not that I didn't think it was a good choice at all. It was just that, I don't know, I just thought it was kind of overdone though, so I didn't use it though. But Dusclops is a fantastic Pokemon. And on top of that, its move, pre its uh, ability pressure makes it though so that your opponent has to use 2 PP per move, which isn't the best ability in the world though, but for something that takes a lot of hits like it, it really makes your opponent waste the uses of their moves as it just sucks them up. Tropius, very unique Pokemon. It is a grass flying type. It has a lot of weaknesses, five in total, and a quad weakness to ice, so that's tough to get around. If you can get around that, and as well as its bad speed, it is pretty diverse, it's just kind of a shame that it just isn't the greatest uh, typing in the world, and it's limited in that regard though, because if, aside from that, I would really like this Pokemon if it was more usable. Chimecho. I have no idea how the hell you were supposed to know it was pronounced Chimecho and not Chimecho. I always called it Chimecho as a kid though, but I get it, it's Chime and Echo. Anyway though, Chimecho is kind of an unusual Pokemon. It's really rare. You are going to have a hell of a time finding this thing, and... It just isn't that strong. It's kind of the same story as Sir Skip, where it's just extremely rare, and I have a hard time recommending it, though, because it just flat out has mediocre stats and isn't really particularly outstanding compared to the other psychic types, though. So I kind of don't really find it a good use of your time to look for this thing, unless you just really want it on your team for whatever arbitrary reason that you think it might be good. Absol! And hey, it's a female, so we actually do have a female Pokemon here. This thing is an asshole. No, I'm kidding. This thing is extremely offensive. Downside, it's a dark type. Pure dark type. Dark types are the weakest offensive type. And this thing, unfortunately, does not have the greatest speed in the world to back up its possible sweeping abilities. So, kinda lame that it's not quite up to snuff with other sweepers. But that doesn't by any means mean that it's a terrible Pokemon. It's decent, you just gotta know how to use it. Vulpix, which is a very unusual Pokemon. It was really good in the first game, but it got nerfed to hell when they introduced special defense as a stat, because your special stat in red and blue became your special defense stat instead of your special attack stat. So unfortunately, Vulpix, nor its Evolve Form Ninetales are really good at special attacking, but instead, they have good special defense. I don't really know why they did that. Pikachu when bred makes Pichu. No special de- Whoa, I caught it already? Wow. And through happiness, it evolves into Pikachu, who is a very fast special attacker. When it evolves into Raichu, its special attack gets a lot stronger. If you catch a Pikachu here, there is a chance that you would get a rare item. It can have the item Light Ball, which doubles the special attack of Pikachu, making it a usable Pokemon in its own right without needing to evolve into Raichu. So, kind of a unique thing that Pikachu has going for it there. But uh, anyway, now that we're done with that, there really isn't much else here. You can fish in this area. Psyduck, you always find this Pokemon while surfing in this area, at least in this part of Safari Zone. I don't know about others. Psyduck is kind of unusual. It's an old favorite, I guess. Despite its name, it is not a psychic type, and neither is its evolution, Golduck. Psyduck has decent special defense and decent special attack. It's your typical water type. Not much else to say here. And it's common, so I guess if you really want a Psyduck just to be funny, it's here. The egg is hatching! And here we get a Why Not, the pre-evolution of Wobbuffet. This Pokemon has the unique ability Shadow Tag, which prevents Pokemon from escaping. Um, I believe only it and Wobbuffet have such an ability. It does the same thing as Arena Trap, though, so it's not really a completely unique ability. But Why Not is a pretty, um, or rather, Wobbuffet is actually a pretty cool Pokemon. It cannot attack directly. Instead, all it does is counter and use Mirror Coat. Wobbuffet is more of a multiplayer Pokemon than a single player Pokemon, though. He was actually so good in multiplayer, he was banned for a while. But the thing is, I just don't think he's useful in single player. He just... His tactic just doesn't... Rather, his gimmick just is not really good tactically on AI opponents. They're not as predictable as, say, you know, a person. Because with a person, you can kind of figure, like, what their reasoning was with movesets and whatnot, and kind of 
tell what they're thinking and whatnot, though. But with an AI, you can't really do that, though. So for single player, not recommended. For multiplayer, highly recommended. Natu is a psychic flying type, so it's kind of unusual and has a lot of weaknesses. Evolves into Zatu, which is, or Eggzatu, as I called it in the last LP. Zatu is kind of unusual, also having a lot of weaknesses, and it just isn't the best psychic type in the world. I guess if you really want something that can use both types, I guess it can work for you though, but I personally don't recommend it, and there's much better psychic tests. The heck, I'd even recommend Girafferig for it. Girafferig, which has a really unique type of normal and psychic, this nullifies the normal weak, the uh, normal type's weakness to fighting, and it also nullifies the psychic calf's weakness to ghost, making it immune to ghost. So, this thing does not have many weaknesses. I believe it is only weak to dark and bug. So, really, really good typing it has. It's not the best stats-wise, but I guess if you want to make this thing fit in on your team and you don't have a psychic type and you want one, I guess you might consider it, though, even though it's not as good as, say, Alakazam or Gardevoir and being a psychic type, though. Oh my god, I found a Fanby! Don't really think that's an awesome catchphrase, but you guys do. So, Fanpy. Pretty rare Pokemon, but you can- well, actually no, it's not really rare, it's just you can only find it on the Acro Bike path. And, as you know, I like this thing. It's very defensive, evolves into Don Fan at a decent level, I guess. And, of course, that is defensive as well as- plus very offensive. Hidden Sir- WHAT?! I FIND ONE?! Jeez! What is it with me and finding stuff as soon as I talk about it? Anyway. Pinsir is basically Heracross minus the fighting type. Doesn't get same type attack bonus of fighting moves, but at the same time it doesn't have quite as many weaknesses as Heracross. They're pretty interchangeable. A lot of people like Heracross better, and I can definitely see why, because that other same type attack bonus helps it immensely, as does Guts, whereas this thing doesn't have Guts. But I like them both. If you want a bug type that's really good, these can both get the Heracross, a bug fighting type. This thing is awesome. If you want a physical attacker, you got it. Heracross doesn't have the best speed in the world, but it learns the move Megahorn, which pretty much makes any darker psychic type cry. Problem is, is that it does have a weakness because it is part fighting type. But if you can get around that weakness to psychic, this thing will make any psychic type just utterly cry. It is a great physical attacker, and in the next games, it only gets better. It gets access to it gets access to moves like close combat in the sequel to this game. So all in all, Heracross is a fantastic Pokemon. Plus it has Guts, which is an awesome ability for physical attackers. Rhyhorn! Unfortunately for this thing, it is a rock and ground type and it is only available this late in the game. By that I mean that we're going to be fighting almost exclusively water types for the rest of the game. Really sucks to be this thing. If it was available earlier in the game, you might see some use of it because it's not bad. It's just that in this particular game, it really sucks to be its type this late in the game. Its Evolve Form Rhydon is no different in terms of type. It's not a bad Pokemon, like I said, but it just sucks to have it in this game, though, because it only appears this late in the game when the last quarter of the game is almost exclusively fighting water types, so, yeah. Snow Runts is only found in this room. One of very few Pokemon that you can only find in one map in the entire game. So, rare Pokemon to say the least. Does that mean it's good? Heavens, no. Snow Runt takes until level... 40 to evolve into Glalie, who has 80 on every stat across the board. This thing sucks. I could not recommend it to anybody. And on top of that, what's really, really sucky is not counting Regiice. It is the only pure ice type in the main adventure of this game. One new Pokemon we can find here is Sfeel, which is the most common Pokemon here by far. This is a water ice type, which is decent in the way of type coverage, I suppose. It has... Uh, ice isn't a bad offensive type, it's just that defensively ice isn't so good because ice is weak to a lot of stuff, but being a water type, it does cancel out some of those ice weaknesses. Now, downside to us uh, feel is that it takes until level 32 to evolve once. Here we have rare candy. Cool. cool. But to evolve once more into its final evolution, Wall Rain, it needs to be in the 40s. That can be a bit of a pain to raise up if you're not very patient. And as many of you know, I don't have a lot of patience. I am usually very fast paced and really, really just like to get stuff done, like you might have seen in my videos. Walrein is a mixed attacker. It's not the most spectacular mixed attacker, but it is one nonetheless, and it's got a f good offensive type coverage with water and ice. So, it's decent, I suppose, but that's really all I have to talk about about that. Clam Pearl, which is a very defensive water type. Now, 
I'm not going to go over the evolutions of this thing because it can evolve into one of two Pokemon. Because the two Pokemon that it evolves into are a major part of a later side quest, so I'm not going to go over this quite yet. But it's really defensive, though. I personally don't like it, though. Especially because you have to have Dive before getting to it, though. So you, that means you'd already have a water type if you could cross the water and use Dive. So I kind of find it a bit unnecessary. Okay, so we have a Deep Sea Tooth and a Deep Sea Scale. These are the reasons why I was not going to go over Clam Pearl's evolutions quite yet. Because the Deep Sea Tooth will allow you to evolve your Clam Pearl into Huntail, quite possibly one of the derpiest Pokemon ever. Huntail is more of a physical attacker and a physical defensive force. But it kind of sucks for it though because being a water type is probably the worst type it could be for a physical attacker because physical water moves did not yet exist. So kind of sucks to be this thing. What I recommend more so is Gorbis, which is, while it's slow, it does decent amount of special damage. So I'm probably going to pick up the Deep Sea Scale just because I recommend that a bit more. Relicanth, a water rock type that's very defensive. Typically, bulky water is, you know, pretty sta fair game though. However, water rock is not nearly as good of a type as water ground. But, regardless if you are going to use this on your team or not, even though it only appears 5% of the time, you want to find a Relicanth and catch it. Trust me on this. You want to catch one. It will become very important later on in the game. Corsola, which is a water rock type. Again, not quite as good as water ground type by any stretch. And as a result, I just think you're better off with a water ground type if you want to have a water Pokemon. Plus, you can't get it till this late in the game, and there are plenty of superior water Pokemon available up to this point in the game, and plenty of superior rock types. Even Geodude, who I said isn't that great because you need to train to evolve it, even that I would probably recommend a little bit more. Chinchou is kind of unusual, has unusual typing, good typing, and it's good at using moves like, you can have Confuse Ray and Thunder Wave on the same Pokemon, so it's good in that regard, there we got a green shard. It's evolved form Lantern, it evolves in the level 20s, it's not too bad to get up to its requirement to evolve. Its stats just aren't that good though. There is a Pokemon that I really, really want to talk about. Like, really want to talk about, and god dang, you're using Intimidate just so much. That Pokemon is the almighty love disc. This thing, I could give my opinions on it. I really could give my opinions on this thing, but I don't have to. There is a website out there that says everything I've always wanted to say about love disc and so much more. And for that, I give them full credit for what I'm about to read. That website is Smoggin. Their love disc article says everything about love disc better than I could ever say it. We'll take a generic water type, give it crummy stats everywhere except for speed, give him a trait that doubles his speed and rain, and the option to use agility, and call it a day. Love Disc is great if you're playing with battle timeout because its mere presence should cause your opponent to laugh out of her so long that you win the match. The attack charm turns Love Disc into a very sturdy physical wall that can survive two Caterpie tackles and force it to switch out. And instead of listing Love Disc's counters, I'll list here what doesn't counter Love Disc. The end. Okay. That is about as frank as it gets. Love Disc sucks horribly. You can't get it to late in the game. You have to fish with a good rod or super rod to get it. But there is a slight advantage to catching Love Discs, and that is the fact that you can get unlimited heart scales from just catching them repeatedly. Because sometimes they'll be holding heart scales in the wild. So, kinda nice, I guess. But, yeah, there's plenty of heart scales in the game already, though. But if you ever want to know where to get more heart scales for deleting moves, that is where you do it. Check out this horsey, okay. This guy will offer to trade you a horsey. He said, this is an emerald. In Ruby and Sapphire, the trade is a bit different. He says, the horsey I caught yesterday is celebrating my birthday. Oh, I can see you want it. After all, it's priceless. So, this guy will offer to trade a Bagon for a horsey. Now, before I go into this, horsey is not a bad Pokemon. It's, you know, one of the earlier water types. It has a Swift Swim for its ability. When it evolves into Seedra, it gets Poison Point as an ability which is one of the only two times that a Pokemon has one ability in its first evolution, has a different ability in its second, and then regains its original ability in its third evolution, which is Kingdra. You have to trade it holding a Dragon Scale to be able to get Kingdra, which is a challenge in itself, because, you know, not everyone has someone to trade with. Which, I like Kingdra a lot. Its stats are pretty decent. It only has one weakness, which is Dragon, and it's a pretty good sweeper, especially in rain. So, you know, I like it, though. But I don't recommend this very much, because you can catch a horsey by just surfing outside of town in Emerald. And that trade is exclusive to Emerald. So why would they do that? 
I really don't know. And on top of that, we can't even get Bagon yet. We need to have all the HMs before we can do that. Rather, we need to have the final HM. In this room, in this small area with only 20 tiles of ground that you can find it on, there is a Pokemon that only appears in this room, and that is Bagon. Bagon is a pure dragon type, one of very few that exist. Has the ability Rockhead, which is kind of nice, preventing it from getting recoil. But it's not that special until it evolves into Shellgon, where it becomes pretty defensive only in this stage. But if you can grow Shellgon up to a really high level, trust me, it's going to be tough for you to just pour the end of the game without going insane. Bagon becomes very special indeed because it evolves into the almighty Salamence. This thing tears everything up. Intimidate as its ability makes up for its lack of physical defenses. It can be a mixed attacker. It has pretty good typing with an immunity to ground. This thing is aggressive as hell. So good, in fact, that in a future game, it was actually banned from tournaments. Yeah. One of very few non-legendary Pokemon that was ever banned from tournaments. An honor that has only ever been held by Why Not, Wobbuffet, um, I believe at one point during Red and Blue Ditto due to a glitch that could happen where if two Dittos met in the field of battle, it would never end. And... Uh, Garchomp. But yeah, it's alright, and Excadrill as well, yeah, Excadrill, but... Yeah, an honor that hasn't been held by many non-legendary Pokemon, this thing has actually been banned from tournaments, so... Yeah, needless to say, it's pretty good. Beldum here, there's only one of these in the entire game. This is a really strange Pokemon. It's tough to raise at first because all it knows is takedown. Eventually it'll evolve into Matang at level 20, gaining a few more moves, but still is not very special. But, if you can grow it, it's really, really tough, but if you can grow it into the high levels, it will eventually evolve into Metagross, which is competitively one of the best Pokemon ever. This thing tears things up, and it is really defensive as well. It can be both a physical attacker and a special attacker alike due to its really good typing. It is just... it wrecks things. No, no other way to say it. It just utterly wrecks everything. We go here, and we use Dive. There's no wild Pokemon in this area, but this area serves kind of a cool purpose. So, underwater, we want to keep going, just try to explore this area down here and listen to this really awesome calming music. And when you get here, you're going to see this. Now, I will say, this is one aspect of this game that I don't like. Visual Braille. If you, as, as you know, Braille is a language that is for the blind. This translates to go up here with a uh, period at the end, I believe. I'm not, like, really the best at Braille, but the thing is, visual Braille? Really? What person who can play a video game and see it has any reason for knowing Braille at all? How could you ever expect the player to know that? And this area has really creepy music, by the way. You can see the full alphabet of Braille characters on all of these right here. This will just tell you each of them. Um, actually, no, this isn't that. I'm thinking of an area in Fire Red and Leaf Green. If you read the Braille here, it says, In this cave we have lived. We owe all the Pokemon. But we sealed the Pokemon away. We feared it. Those with courage, those with hope, open a door, and eternal Pokemon awaits. You read this, and that tells you to use Dig. Now, me and all my infinite wisdom, I didn't actually bring a digging Pokemon. I completely forgot. So what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to teach Dig to Moagami, and then just regain another move at some point. I think I'll probably get... Oh, what should I get rid of here? You know what? I think I'll get rid of Bulk Up because I haven't really been using it much and I can just reteach it using a um, heart scale if I just go to the move relearner. So I'll do that really quick just because I don't want to go back all that way. So let's teach, let's teach it Dig. And right here, right on this very space, we want to use Dig. Now, if you recall what I just read... Turn to underwater, it says. That opens. That is cryptic as hell. I don't know how any kid was expected to figure this out without buying a player's guide. But uh, anyway, it says that it referred to it as one Pokemon. 
It just said the Pokemon we sold away, we feared it. Some people think that that is referencing the sequel to this game, in which there is a legendary Pokemon that is tied to this chamber. Not entirely sure, but it's possible. If you read this right here, it'll tell you first comes Whale Relicanth, last comes Whalelord. So, again, extremely cryptic. You have to come in here with both a Whalelord and a Relicanth. Two very rare Pokemon. Have them both in your party, have one in front, one in the back, and then talk to it again. Or did I do it backwards? Shoot. <laughs> I like how I just read it and I got it backwards. All right, so. No, it should be first comes Whalelord, last comes Relicanth. Why not? Hey, it's, we're in a moving truck! It's the same sound effect! It sounded as if a door opened somewhere far away. Right, right, down, down, then you straight. We have to go right two spaces, down two spaces. Actually, it's Rock Smash in this game, I should say. It's strength if you're playing Ruby and Sapphire. And we're gonna use Rock Smash. We can't use that here. Oh, wait, an emerald is left, left, down, down. Okay, one, two, one, two. I always get the Ruby and Sapphire ones mixed up. I first I was like strength, I was like, wait, no, never mind, they changed it to emerald. So on top of that, they also changed it from version to version, so it's even more cryptic. So even if you somehow figured this out in Ruby and Sapphire without looking up a guide or something, yeah. And my playtime's really high because there's been quite a few times I've had to leave the game on various things. Plus there were this off-screen Wailord Hunt and off-screen Relicant Hunt as well. But going on, you want to save before entering here because... Check it out. This is Regirock, one of the legendary Pokemon in the Hoenn region, and one of the first three that we can go after. This thing is one of the most defensive Pokemon ever. It has 200 defense. It learns pretty unusual moves too, like Lock On and Zap Cannon, which you wouldn't expect a rock type to have. Plus, like all the uh, different. Re oh. Plus, like its counterparts, it also has the move Superpower. Really, really powerful. Check this out. This is telling you to make a perfect lap around the perimeter of the room and then check the tablet again. If you're playing Ruby and Sapphire, it would be wait two minutes without pressing a button. Yeah, how much more cryptic does it get than that? I don't know. But check it out. We have yet another legendary Pokemon right there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and save. And so now that we're done getting everything done that I wanted to get done, who do I want to fight this with? Uh, we'll start off with Moagami, why not? Worked out pretty well for me in the attempt that I successfully caught Regirock in. Here we go! This is Reggie Ice! Quite possibly the coolest cry ever. Reggie Ice is just like, and then Reggie Ice is like, eee! Sounds like an eagle almost. So, Reggie Ice, the eagle, is a pure ice type. One of the worst types that you can be defensively. But, that by no means that Reggie Ice is a bad Pokemon. Reggie Ice is basically the special counterpart of Reggie Rock. One of the best special walls in the game, and it has some offensive capability, so I guess it's got at least something over Blissey in the way of special walls. Unfortunately, it got nerfed a lot in later games when rock types became actually good, so it's not the greatest Pokemon anymore, but pretty good. Reading this, you have to go to the very center of the room and use Flash. If you're playing Ruby and Sapphire, it's Fly. I brought my Pikachu that I caught in the Safari Zone, because I knew that I needed to get something that could learn Flash, and I wasn't sure if I had one, so that was one of the reasons why I wanted that Pikachu. That and I haven't ever actually used a Pikachu in battle in an LP before of mine, so I don't know. Maybe it'll get a chance to shine. I really don't know. 
Let's just go ahead and save our game. And... Go for it. It's Registeel! This is the balance between Regirock and Regiice. Its defenses are very balanced. So this is more of your dual wall Pokemon as opposed to the others which are more of, well, more of a dedicated physical wall or dedicated special wall. So this thing is a little bit easier to weaken on each front, but you know, kind of a trade-off. This is mainly the same Pokemon moveset wise, just that it has Metal Claw and place of uh, Rock Throw on Reggie Rock and place of Icy Wind on Reggie Ice. Is that a breaking news story? We're bringing this emergency news flash. In various Hoenn locales, there has been a report of a bzz colored Pokemon in flight. The identity of this Pokemon is currently unknown. We now return to your regu regular movie program. What are you watching? Stand by me there? Did you catch that? What color the announcement of the Pokemon was? Now, this choice will determine what legendary Pokemon you can fight after the main adventure has ended. However, don't worry, I will be going over both of the legendary Pokemon we can find. For this situation, I'm going to say blue. Doesn't matter what you say. Well, actually, yes, it does matter what you say, but I'll be going over it later, just so you know the weight of your decision. This is an area that I'm going to bet not very many of you have ever seen, and some of you probably didn't even know existed. Those memories fade. Seek to carve them into their hearts. Okay. Deep, very deep. There's other event areas, but this is the only event area that I'm going to be showing because it's the only one that I can legitimately actually go to. So let's open up with Altair here, I guess. Okay, ready? Here we go. Uh, really quick, actually, before I go, I want to show where this is on the map. It is all the way down here. Yeah, didn't think you could ever be here, did you? So in we go and check it out. I'M NOT THE CENTER OF THE SCREEN, OH MY GOD! This is Latias, the legendary dragon Pokemon we'd be fighting should we have decided to answer red to our mother's question or if we were playing ruby version. In Sapphire version, this would be Latios, and if we answered red to our mother's question, we'd be fighting Latios here as well. Latios is level 50, and it will not run away from you should you fight it here. What they expect you to do is go to a Nintendo event, obtain an e-reader card, have the e-reader, and send it to your other game. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, to be able to do this for Emerald version, E-reader functionality was removed in Emerald outside of the Japanese version, for whatever stupid reason it was. So you have to use a Ruby or Sapphire cartridge and then transfer it over through mixing records, like I did, okay? But, to do this in total, this E-reader card was given out one time at select Toys R Us stores that were only available, I believe, in North America and in Japan. And I think they're only in North America for this particular event. I think it was given out differently in Japan. But to do this, you had to own two Game Boy Advances, a Link Cable, an e-reader, have this card that was only given out on one day in select Toys R Us stores, which I ended up having to skip my 8th grade dance when I was in school to be able to get, which I hated everyone in my school, so I don't really regret that too much. I'm going to use an Ultra Ball here. Um, you had to do all that. Keep in mind, this thing was like an hour from my house, and it took like days of convincing to get somebody to take me there, because I was a young kid. And if you somehow had this e-reader card, own two Game Boy Advances, own the Link Cable, own a Ruby cartridge or Sapphire cartridge, and own an Emerald cartridge, mix records with yourself, and then do that, okay? My Eon Ticket card has not withstood the test of time, and it no longer works, so I had to go find a new one from a collector and buy it from him. Then on top of that, my Ruby and Sapphire cartridges, I either could not find them, or they had mixed records too many times, and I couldn't transfer them to my Emerald. So I had to get the Webmaster of Bulbapedia to overnight his cartridges to me, me paying in full for the shipping, mind you. Then I had to go find another e-reader because I moved away from home and I left my e-reader at my mother's house when I moved away because I didn't think I was going to be needing it in the immediate future. How wrong was I? 
So in total, to be able to show this fight in my Let's Play, I spent over $140. We're here on Route 110 because I have something that I want to show off, okay? First of all, to do this, you want the acro bike. You... No, I did not mean to do that. To do that, you want to have a Pokemon that is at least in the mid-20s or so, preferably having the ability Arena Trap or Shadow Tag. Wobbuffet or Why Not would do great. I don't have those Pokemon at those high a level, though, so unfortunately I can't do that. What you want to do is, you want to go and use a Repel, and with the Acrobike, you want to go into the grass, hop around a bit, and hopefully see if a Pokemon will appear. If you hop around for a little while and nothing appears, then you are unfortunately not in the right area. The reason why you want to hop on the Acrobike is because this does not use up steps on your repel. If you don't find anything, go into this door. It doesn't make you get off your bike. Exit again, and just keep repeating until something does appear. Okay! This is Latios! One of the legendary dragon psychic types that you can find in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Took me about 15 or so minutes to have it appear. There's plenty of other places in the world where you can go in and out of buildings on routes and just refresh its location because this thing roams around the world completely at random. Unfortunately, it's not like Tornadus and Thundurus in black and white where you can just look for different weather to see if it's there or not. But yeah, anyway. Now, this right here, you can only find one of these per game file. It's whether, because I choose that. When that TV program was on, when we uh, started the after game and I said blue to the answer to my mother's question, that is why I found Latios here. I'd be finding another Pokemon if I answered red. We'll be covering that later. But anyway, Latios is the more defensive of the two Pokemon that you can find. And personally, I just think it looks a lot cooler. I'm here at the Weather Institute, uh, right outside of Fortree City, because there's some people here that I need to talk to. There's some people here that I want to talk to. Let's see here. We've been noticing temporary and isolated cases of droughts and heavy rain lately. So up on the second floor, they might have something to tell us about that. Again, this is only an emerald, so if you're playing Ruby and Sapphire, you won't be able to do this, unfortunately. But hey, still pretty cool nonetheless. So let's talk to this guy. What does he say? I track weather patterns all over the Hoenn region. Presently, a drought has been recorded on Route 116. Could that mean somewhere near Route 116? It won't tell us what exactly is going on, but... There is definitely... We definitely have a reason to go check that out. So, how about we head up to Route 116? I'll meet you guys there. Rayquaza, a very aggressive dragon flying type Pokemon. This was where legendary dragons all started. It is level 70. Essentially, if you catch this thing here and now, nothing can stand in your way for the rest of the adventure. You can just plow through the rest of the game without even trying. Ditto is a unique Pokemon having pretty crummy stats, but it can transform into any Pokemon it may be fighting, so that's kind of cool. It's got some items to help it along, but you know what Ditto is. The main purpose of catching Ditto is that it can breed with just about anything, so therefore it's good to catch if you want to breed certain Pokemon. But that's really about all there is to Ditto. If you complete your Pokedex, 
then you are actually able to get the three Johto starters uh, from, or rather, one of the three Johto starters from Professor Birch picking another starter Pokemon if you catch all 200 Pokemon in the Hoenn decks. They are Chikorita, who is the slow, who is pretty slow and is kind of the more challenging one to raise. Doesn't mean that it's bad, it's just kind of more challenging. Standard grass type. You have Cyndaquil, who has the same stats as Charizard, meaning that it's actually pre it's pretty familiar to raise if you ever raised a Charmander back when you were younger. And then you have Totodile, who is kind of the middle of the road of the two. It's both offensive and defensive, but isn't really the best at either, but it's kind of balanced. Not going to really go over their evolutions because I already have a Crystal Let's Play, which I did that, but I figured I would just talk about the three of them. Right here is something really, really unique. This looks familiar from Crystal. Let's check it out. If you recall how we awoke Pseudo Wudo back in, uh, back in, uh, Crystal, we want to go ahead and use our Whalmer Pail on it, water it, and... The Weird Tree doesn't like the Whalmer Pail. The Weird Tree attacked! And this is a, an example of probably one of the dumbest names for any Pokemon ever. As you recall, Pseudo Wudo. Really? And just when you really think about the pun behind this thing's name, it's really, really stupid. Let me go just do Dragon Claw. I really hope that I don't kill it. Sudowoodoo is one of the more mediocre rock types. It doesn't really have the moves to back up its typing all that well. And it's just all around not a rock type that I generally use. It looks like a grass type, but it is a rock type. Its name is Sudowoodoo because it's a pseudo tree. It's not really a tree. Artisan Cave. One of the strangest areas in Pokemon. Now, there's a lot of hidden items in this area. You want to have your um, item finder equipped for this area just because there's a lot of hidden items here. There's one item in plain sight, but that's about it. But one of the main draws of this area is that you can find wild Smeargles here. It's the only Pokemon that appears, and this area is only an Emerald. Smeargol is a really unique Pokemon. It has crummy stats. When I say crummy, I mean horrible. But the main draw of Smeargle is the move Sketch. Sketch is a really interesting move. It makes it so that it can permanently copy any move that is used on it by an opponent. As you see, it's doing it right now. It's odd because that move doesn't generally work very often. And it now knows Dragon Claw, and it will keep Dragon Claw forever, and as it levels up, or from using Heart Scales, you can just keep teaching it Sketch and get your desired move set. So, this is capable of learning any move you want. You can have any move set of any four moves on this thing, making it the most versatile Pokemon ever. Ironically, that means that it has the, both the biggest move pool and the smallest move pool, because it's only naturally learned move is Sketch, but at the same time, Sketch makes it able to learn anything. So, if you want something where you can put any moves on it at all, um, possibly a useful HM Slave, or even just something that you can use to breed on, breed moves onto Pokemon through use of, you know, breeding to get egg moves, this guy's your guy. Come to think of it, ever since our paths first crossed in Granite Cave in Duford, hey, they didn't type for that, I had this feeling. I thought that you would eventually become the champion. My predictions usually come true. And where will you go from here? Even I couldn't tell you that. Well, I could tell you that. I could tell you where I'll be going next. But I think it's a bit more interesting if I'm a bit more... mysterious. Two-dimensional with my answer. I don't know. Can't really think of much else to say. So, a lot of people have been asking if this is going to be my final Pokemon Let's Play, simply because I don't have a way to record DS games, because there is no way to record them from the actual system in any kind of reliable quality without using a camcorder, and I am not interested in doing illegal ways of doing things, simply because not only am I against breaking the law, but they provide imperfect results. But I'm pleased to tell you that while it's not next, I definitely will be doing another Pokemon game at some undefined point in the future. Alright? But, now that all that is said and done, I'd like to thank every one of you for watching, and I'll see you next time.